Hello, thank you for joining with me. We are in A Course in Miracles, the Foundation for Inner Peace, third edition. And today we are starting section two of chapter 11, God or the Ego. And this is the invitation to healing. Dear Father, please allow us an open mind for a new experience. Please help us to be who you would have us be. Do what you would have us do. Go where you would have us go and say what you would have us say, and to whom, and so it is. Amen. Okay, section two, the invitation to healing. If sickness is separation, the decision to heal and to be healed is the first step toward recognizing what you truly want. Every attack is a step away from this, and every healing thought brings it closer. The Son of God has both Father and Son because He is both Father and Son. To unite having and being is to unite your will with His, for He wills you Himself. And you will yourself to Him because in your perfect understanding of Him, you know there is but one will. Yet, when you attack any part of God and his kingdom, your understanding is not perfect, and what you really want is therefore lost to you. Healing thus becomes a lesson in understanding, and the more you practice it, the better teacher and learner you become. If you have denied truth, what better witnesses to its reality could you have than those who have been healed by it? But be sure to count yourself among them, for in your willingness to join them is your healing accomplished. Every miracle that you accomplish speaks to you of the fatherhood of God. Every healing thought that you accept, either from your brother or in your own mind, teaches you that you are God's son. In every hurtful thought you hold, wherever you perceive it, lies the denial of God's fatherhood and of your sonship. And denial is as total as love. You cannot deny part of yourself because the rest will seem to be separate and therefore without meaning. And being without meaning to you, you will not understand it. To deny meaning is to fail to understand. You can heal only yourself, for only God's Son needs healing. You need it because you do not understand yourself, and therefore know not what you do. Having forgotten your will, you do not know what you really want. Healing is a sign that you want to make whole, and this willingness opens your ears to the voice of the Holy Spirit, whose message is wholeness. He will enable you to go far beyond the healing you would undertake, for beside your small willingness to make whole, he will lay his own complete will and make yours whole. What can the Son of God not accomplish with the fatherhood of God in him? And yet the invitation must come from you, for you have surely learned that whom you invite as your guest will abide with you. The Holy Spirit cannot speak to an unwelcoming host because he will not be heard. The eternal guest remains, but his voice grows faint in alien company. He needs your protection only because your care is a sign that you want him. Think like him ever so slightly in the little spark becomes a blazing light that fills your mind so that he becomes your only guest. Whenever you ask the ego to enter, you lessen his welcome. He will remain, but you have allied yourself against him. Whatever journey you choose to take, he will go with you waiting. You can safely trust his patience, for he cannot leave a part of God. Yet you will need far more than patience. You will never rest until you know your function and fulfill it, for only in this can your will and your Father's be wholly joined. To have him is to be like him, and he has given himself to you. 
You who have God must be as God for his function became yours with his gift. Invite this knowledge back into your mind and let nothing that obscures it enter. The guest whom God sent you will teach you how to do this if you but recognize the little spark and are willing to let it grow. Your willingness need not be perfect because his is. If you will merely offer him a little place, he will lighten it so much that you will gladly let it be increased. And by this increase, you will begin to remember creation. Would you be hostage to the ego or host to God? You will accept only whom you invite. You are free to determine who shall be your guest and how long he shall remain with you. Yet this is not real freedom, for it still depends on how you see it. The Holy Spirit is there, although he cannot help you without your invitation. And the ego is nothing whether you invite it in or not. Real freedom depends on welcoming reality, and of your guests only, the Holy Spirit is real. Know then who abides with you merely by recognizing what is already there. And do not be satisfied with imaginary comforters, for the comforter of God is in you. And if you'd like to go ahead and close your eyes, back supported, head and neck free, I'm going to use um, a guided meditation, and I will lead us in by reading Lesson 115. Salvation is my only function here. My part is essential to God's plan for salvation. My function here is to forgive the world for all the errors I have made, for thus am I released from them with all the world. I am essential to the plan of God for the salvation of the world. For he gave me his plan that I might save the world. I invite you to have a seat with your back supported and your head free. You don't have to have any fancy fingers or uncomfortable positions. Comfort is key. Don't worry about being in a totally silent place and know that thoughts are not the enemy. I'll be guiding you through the entire way. So we'll begin by taking a few delicious deep breaths, breathing in through your nose and exhaling through your mouth. Really good. Inhaling through your nose and elongating your exhale through your mouth. Again, in through the nose and an even longer exhale through your mouth. Again, in and elongating the exhale through the mouth, knowing that by doing this, you're calming down your nervous system, calming your vagus nerve starting to de-excite your body and inducing some deep healing rest. One final time, the most delicious inhale you've taken all day. And exhaling, just letting that breath fall out of your lungs. Really good. So you can go ahead and close your eyes if you haven't already. And now allow your breath to be simple, natural, innocent. So I invite you to bring your attention inward. So much of our day is spent focusing outward on all of our external stimulation, all of our external demands. So now we're going to take this time to bring that attention inward into our body, into our senses. So we'll begin by bringing our attention ever so gently onto our lips. And as you inhale, imagine breathing into your lips. And as you exhale, imagine them softening expanding. Really good. And on your next inhale, breathing into your nose, so bringing all of your awareness into your nose. And as you exhale, imagine it softening. Beautiful. And on your next inhale, imagine breathing and bringing your attention into your jaw. And as you exhale, feel your jaw go slack, feeling the muscles relax around your jaw. Beautiful, and now breathing in and bringing your awareness ever so gently to your ears. And while we're here, your sense of hearing. 
So listening for all the sounds you can detect. The prevalence of my voice and the subtlety of all the sounds around you. This is an opportunity to not judge the sounds as good or bad. But simply include them inside of this experience. Allowing everything that's happening around you to be part of this stressless meditation. Really good. And on your next breath, gently bringing your awareness into your eyes. So softening the muscles around your eyes, softening your eyelids. Really good. And on your next breath, bringing your awareness to the very top of your head. You might like to imagine that there's a little portal at the top of your head, allowing you to connect to energy above you. And now I invite you to imagine a beautiful, warm light coming in through the top of your head, and softening all the muscles in your face, your jaw, your ears, your scalp, and then allowing that beautiful, warm light to melt down into your neck, into your traps, with each inhale, we bring the sensation into our neck, into our traps, and as we exhale, we allow those muscles to soften, allowing your shoulders to drop, allowing your lifetime of accumulated stresses to just melt down out of your shoulders and down into your body. Really good, and on your next breath, bringing your awareness into your arms and your hands, breathing in softness into every single muscle and as you exhale, feeling those muscles expand, feeling them release, letting your hands melt into your lap, letting your chair support you, letting gravity encourage your body to release, to surrender, letting the muscles melt. Beautiful. And on your next inhale, breathing into your heart, opening up your heart, opening up your chest, bravely allowing yourself to be vulnerable for a moment. And as you exhale, letting any stress and tension from your head and neck that moved into your chest, allowing that to just wash down into your belly. Really good. And on your next breath, breathing into your belly. Letting it be a big, deep belly breath. And as you exhale, letting everything soften, letting everything surrender. As you inhale, your diaphragm drops. You imagine sending breath into your pelvic bowl. And as you exhale, releasing anything that isn't serving you, any tension from today or yesterday, letting all those muscles, letting all that stress just melt right into the pelvis. And on your next inhale, we can breathe all the way down into your groin, into your bum. And as you exhale, letting those muscles soften, letting them ground. And imagining that warm white light from the top of your head flowing all the way down, softening everything in your body, warming everything in your body, all the way through your chest, your belly, your pelvis, until things melt right into your thighs. And on your next inhale, breathing in softness and expansion into all the muscles of your thighs. And exhaling, letting everything melt down into your calves. Breathing in softness into your calves, letting them feel soft, letting them feel strong and grounded and expansive. And as you exhale, letting everything wash down into your feet. Taking a moment to tense all the muscles in your feet, because right now they're holding all the stress from your entire body. That stress that this beautiful warm light has washed down through your head, your shoulders, your chest, your belly, your pelvis, your thighs, your calves. It's all down in your feet now. So stressing all the muscles in your feet, tensing up every single muscle, flexing them, and inhaling into your feet. And as you exhale, releasing those muscles, letting your feet soften and imagining that warm white light just washing right through you and rinsing all of this stress right out of the body, right down through the bottom of the feet and into the earth. Really good, and on your next inhale, imagine breathing into the top of your head. And as you exhale, imagining that breath cleansing your entire body from the top of the head to the neck, the chest, the belly, the pelvis, the thighs, 
calves, your ankles and your feet, all softening and feeling expansive, connected. Really good. Taking a few more breaths here, breathing in softness, breathing in connection. And with each exhale, we allow the body to get heavier. We allow the muscles to soften even more. We allow ourselves to surrender to this moment, allowing the body to surrender into the chair, letting gravity open and comfort the body, feeling held reminding yourself that for this beautiful moment there's nowhere you have to be there's nowhere you have to go you've already arrived and from this place of groundedness surrender and softness from this place where we're not solely identified with the body but our awareness started to move beyond the casings of the body allowing your awareness to start to expand out and to fill the entire room that you're in Really good. So as you inhale, breathing your energy and awareness into your body. And as you exhale, imagine sending your energy out into the entire room. Really good. And on this next inhale, imagine breathing the frequency and the current of love into your body, letting that charge up every single cell in your body. And as you exhale, imagine sending that out to your entire building so that your sense of self, your awareness, and this frequency of love is expanding beyond your body, beyond the room, and out into your entire building. Really good. And again, breathing in this beautiful warm white light from the top of your head, charging up every single cell in your body with the frequency of love. And as you exhale, imagine sending that out to your entire town. Beautiful. And again, coming back into the body, breathing in this beautiful, warm, white light into your very core. And as you exhale, imagine sending that out to your whole country. So that your sense of awareness, your sense of love, your sense of connectedness expands far beyond your body and out into your entire country, including all your friends, your enemies, your family. Really good. And on your next inhale, breathing in, breathing your awareness into your body. And as you exhale, imagine wrapping your awareness around the entire planet. Reminding yourself that you're connected to every person, place, and thing on the planet Earth. And enjoying that sense of expanded family, connectedness. And taking a big, delicious inhale into your body. And as you exhale, imagine sending this beautiful, warm, white light out into the entire universe. So beyond the planet, beyond the solar system, beyond the galaxies, beyond the clusters of galaxies and out into the entire universe. Just blasting the whole universe with this beautiful white light coming from your body, blasting the universe with the frequency of love and for a moment reminding yourself that you are the universe and the universe is you. There is only one thing and we are all it and that one thing is energy. So enjoying this moment of connecting with universal energy, taking a moment to undulate between individuality and totality, your left brain and your right, imagining yourself as one tiny wave on an entire ocean of energy. Really good. And on your next inhale, breathing your awareness into your body, into the room, starting to wake up your hands, your feet. And from this place of expanded awareness, of connection to all that is, I invite you to visualize your next big event, the next thing that's coming up for you that you really care about, the thing that's coming up for you where you really want to be the most amazing version of you. You want to show up confident, calm, magnetic. So take a moment and ask yourself, what thing do I have coming up that I would love to really put my best foot forward? 
probably the first thing that comes to mind is a great one to play with for today. And we're going to visualize that. We're going to play this movie in our mind. The brain doesn't know the difference between imagined memories and real memories. We're going to create a memory right now of this event going as well as it possibly could. So where are you right before this event takes place? Are you in your car? Are you getting ready at home? Are you in the stairwell gathering your thoughts? And if you had a magic wand and you could wave it over the scenario, how do you feel in this moment, right before this event? What story are you telling yourself? What's the dialogue happening in your mind? If you're feeling nervous, that's okay. That simply means that you care about what you do. It simply means that what you do means the world to you, and that's beautiful. So rather than trying to push that nervousness away or dampen any anxiety that you may be feeling, what if you just give yourself permission to feel it? If you have some nervousness, some jitters, some anxiety, it's okay. It means you're alive. It means you're human. And you have the opportunity to use this energy in any way that you want. You can either let this fear sabotage you, or you can turn your fear into fuel. So imagining yourself right before this event, and now I want you to feel your feet on the ground. I want you to breathe in that beautiful warm light that we just accessed, and imagine that washing over your whole body from the top of your head all the way down to your feet. And imagine it just washing that fear and anxiety out of your body. And as you inhale, breathing in the feeling of confidence, breathing in the feeling of connectedness, and trusting that you are enough. Really good. And now imagining the event itself having the conversation, taking the stage, playing the game, asking the question, whatever it is for you. But again, imagining your magic wand scenario, taking a moment to play this movie in your mind. What's your dream case scenario? How do you feel? How do you show up? And most importantly, how do you make other people feel? Do they feel safe? Do they feel happy? Do they feel inspired? Do they trust you? Are people laughing? Are they smiling? Are they crying? Giving your imagination a moment to run wild. This is your dream case, magic wand scenario. What happens? Do you get a raise? Do you get a standing ovation? Do you get the offer? Do you close the deal? And most importantly, how does this feel? How does it feel in your heart, in your gut, in your bones? knowing that you have performed at the top of your game, that you have been a vessel to deliver your fulfillment, that you have used your unique gifts to lift the people up around you. Taking a moment to breathe that sensation into every single cell in your body. And exhaling, letting go of anything that isn't serving this scenario. Really good, so giving yourself a big internal high five, for taking the moment to invest in this dream, to invest in this one event, to make a mental map of how you want things to go. So here's what I know for sure. You are meant for greatness. You have been elegantly designed by nature to deliver your unique gifts to everyone around you. Your dreams are divinely inspired, and inside of those dreams are the tools to make them manifest. And by you taking this time to invest in yourself, to eradicate the stress, and to step into the most amazing version of you, you're doing everyone around you a favor. What if you knew that you couldn't veer off your destiny? What would it feel like to trust that this or something better is already on the way to you? How do you get your ego out of the way and allow nature to use you as a vessel for greatness? How do you see that this isn't even about you? How do you give yourself permission to surrender and let nature use you? How do you trust your lifetime of experience? Isn't it your lifetime of experience that's gotten you to this event, to this moment in time where you want to show up as the most amazing version of you? How do you trust that by you stepping into your greatness, you inspire others to do the same? Isn't it time to stop playing small? 
Isn't it time to let go of any fear that you being the most amazing version of you will make other people not like you? Isn't that not true? Won't people love you even more as you realize all of your gifts? Isn't this the most generous thing that we can do? Because by us stepping into our greatness, we inspire everyone around us to do the same. How do we let go of our attachment to outcome? What if you give yourself permission to enjoy every single step of the journey? Aren't you destined for greatness? Haven't you worked your entire life to be in this moment? What if nature really is on your side? How would it feel to trust that? How do you remind yourself that you are enough? What if you feel the fear and do it anyway? Salvation is my only function here. My part is essential to God's plan for salvation. When we choose to forgive, we choose for ourselves and for all the world, for they are one. Thus, each of us is essential to the plan for each of us contains the whole. I hope you enjoyed that meditation today. Thank you so much, and reading, of course. I look forward to joining with you tomorrow.